Viral hemorrhagic fevers, or VHFs, are a real and present threat. These diseases can cause severe illness and even death. Understanding VHFs and how to protect ourselves is crucial. VHFs often emerge unexpectedly, causing fear and uncertainty. Swift action and international collaboration are essential. Early detection and rapid response are key. Knowledge is our most powerful tool in combating these foes. Viral hemorrhagic fevers are a group of illnesses caused by several distinct families of viruses. These include the Ebola and Marburg viruses, Lassa fever virus, Rift Valley fever virus, and Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus, and Dengue and Yellow fever viruses. These viruses can cause severe and life-threatening disease in humans. VHFs damage the body's vascular system, leading to hemorrhaging. Understanding these viruses is crucial for developing diagnostic tests and treatments. Further research is essential for developing effective vaccines and antiviral therapies. The symptoms of VHFs can vary depending on the specific virus involved. Early symptoms often resemble the flu, making early diagnosis challenging. Initial symptoms include fever, fatigue, muscle aches, dizziness, and weakness. Severe symptoms may develop, including bleeding, vomiting, diarrhea, and shock. Prompt diagnosis and treatment can significantly improve survival. Early intervention helps prevent severe complications and reduces transmission risk. VHFs are typically transmitted to humans through contact with infected animals or their bodily fluids. This can occur through direct contact with infected animals, such as handling or butchering them, or through indirect contact with contaminated environments, like animal droppings or carcasses. Some VHFs can also spread from person to person through direct contact with the blood or other bodily fluids of an infected individual. This can occur through close contact with a sick person, such as caring for them or sharing needles. Healthcare workers are at increased risk of exposure to VHFs, especially when caring for infected patients. Proper infection control practices are essential for protecting healthcare workers and preventing nosocomial transmission or spread within healthcare settings. Certain VHFs, such as dengue and yellow fever, can also be transmitted through mosquito bites. Controlling mosquito populations and using personal protective measures, such as mosquito nets and repellents, are important for preventing these vector-borne infections. Section 5. Diagnosing the Threat Diagnosing VHFs can be challenging, especially in the early stages of the illness, as the symptoms often mimic those of other common infections. Laboratory tests are essential for confirming a diagnosis and identifying the specific virus involved. These tests may include blood tests to detect viral antigens or antibodies, or molecular tests to detect viral RNA or DNA. Specialized laboratories are often required to perform these tests, as some VHFs are highly contagious and require specialized handling procedures. Rapid diagnostic tests are being developed to facilitate faster and more accessible testing, particularly in resource-limited settings. These tests can help healthcare providers quickly identify cases and implement appropriate control measures. Early diagnosis is critical for effective management and control of VHF outbreaks. Prompt identification of cases allows for timely isolation and treatment of infected individuals, as well as implementation of public health measures to prevent further spread. Section 6. Treatment and Prevention Strategies Treatment for VHFs often focuses on supportive care, such as managing fluid and electrolyte balance, maintaining oxygen levels, and treating any secondary infections. There are currently limited antiviral therapies available for some VHFs, but research is ongoing to develop more effective treatments. Prevention is the most effective strategy for controlling VHFs. This includes avoiding contact with infected animals or their bodily fluids, practicing proper hygiene, and using personal protective equipment when necessary. Vaccination is available for some VHFs, such as yellow fever. Vaccination is a highly effective way to prevent these infections and should be considered for individuals traveling to or living in areas where these viruses are endemic. Public health measures such as surveillance systems, rapid response teams, and community education campaigns play a crucial role in preventing and controlling VHF outbreaks. Section 7. Recent Outbreaks and Global Response Recent outbreaks of VHF, such as the Ebola outbreak in West Africa from 2014 to 2016 and the ongoing Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo, have highlighted the devastating impact of these diseases 
and the importance of a coordinated global response. These outbreaks have underscored the need for stronger public health infrastructure, improved surveillance systems, and enhanced international collaboration to effectively combat VHFs. The global response to these outbreaks has involved a concerted effort by international organizations, governments, and healthcare workers to provide medical care, implement control measures, and develop new tools and strategies for preventing and treating VHFs. These efforts have led to significant advancements in our understanding of VHFs and our ability to respond to outbreaks. However, continued investment in research development and public health capacity building is essential to ensure that we are prepared for future threats. Section 8, the importance of public health infrastructure. Strong public health infrastructure is essential for preventing and controlling VHF outbreaks. This includes robust surveillance systems to detect and track cases, well-equipped laboratories to confirm diagnoses, and trained healthcare personnel to provide appropriate care. Investing in public health infrastructure is a critical step in strengthening global health security and protecting populations from emerging infectious diseases. Public health infrastructure also plays a crucial role in educating communities about VHFs, promoting preventive measures, and coordinating responses to outbreaks. Community engagement and education are essential for empowering individuals to protect themselves and their families. Building and maintaining strong public health systems requires sustained investment and commitment from governments and international organizations. A coordinated global approach is necessary to ensure that all countries have the capacity to prevent, detect, and respond to VHF outbreaks. Section 9, Personal Protective Measures. Individuals can take several steps to protect themselves from VHFs. These include avoiding contact with infected animals or their bodily fluids, practicing proper hand hygiene, and using personal protective equipment, or PPE, when necessary, such as gloves, masks, and gowns. When traveling to areas where VHFs are endemic, it's important to consult with a healthcare professional about recommended vaccinations and preventive measures. Staying informed about current outbreaks and travel advisories can help individuals make informed decisions about their travel plans. In areas with active VHF outbreaks, it's essential to follow public health guidelines and recommendations. This may include avoiding close contact with sick individuals, practicing respiratory hygiene, and avoiding crowded places. Personal protective measures are particularly important for healthcare workers and others who may be exposed to infected individuals or their bodily fluids. Proper training and infection control practices is crucial for ensuring the safety of healthcare workers and preventing nosocomial transmission. Section 10, the future of VHF prevention and control. The future of VHF prevention and control relies on continued research and development of new tools and strategies. This includes developing effective vaccines and antiviral therapies, improving diagnostic tests, and strengthening public health infrastructure. International collaboration and data sharing are essential for accelerating progress in VHF research and development. Sharing information and resources across borders can help improve our understanding of these viruses and develop more effective interventions. Advancements in genomic sequencing and other technologies are providing new insights into the evolution and transmission of VHFs. This information can help us predict and prevent future outbreaks. The development of rapid diagnostic tests and point-of-care diagnostics is improving access to testing and enabling faster responses to outbreaks, particularly in resource-limited settings. Continued innovation in diagnostic technologies is crucial for effective disease surveillance and control.